Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm just jumping in here with a quick little video. And first of all, I just wanna say thanks massively for all the love and positivity on the previous two videos about shooting JPEG only with the Fuji X-T4. In essence, those two videos have brought about a massive amount of passion for photography. Not that I necessarily lost the passion, uh, but I think it was just difficult getting back into the rhythm of producing videos and taking photos again. And if things weren't quite up to scratch, uh, I just didn't feel that motivated with it. By reducing some of that friction and shooting JPEG only, it's allowed me to just thoroughly enjoy the experiences of taking images. And you really can't take that for granted when it comes to photography. But what I wanted to quickly jump in with today is a look into how you can use some flexibility along with that restrictive creativity of the JPEG only. Now, of course, it could be quite daunting if you want to join in with this experiment of shooting JPEG only and you're worried that maybe your camera is going to do something that's a little bit iffy and it's not quite what you're looking for. Maybe the colors are going to come out slightly wrong or maybe you just change your mind based on the recipe that you started your day with. So what I'm going to share with you today is the Fuji X Raw Studio app, which is a way of using your camera's built-in image processor, the one that is designed by the manufacturer specifically for processing the images off of this sensor and give the equivalent output to what it would be if you shot JPEG only in camera. Now the benefits to this are you can shoot RAW comfortably and you can go off and you can edit them in Lightroom or Capture One or some other software that you want to use, but you also have the ability to utilize the manufacturer's pure colors straight out the Fuji RAW. As I've shown previously, when we go into things like Lightroom and we look at the JPEG versus the RAW that came out of camera, there's always gonna be a discrepancy. What you see in the JPEG is gonna be true to the manufacturer, and what you see in the RAW is gonna be how your software processes your image. And that's gonna be different across all different software, whether you use Capture One, Lightroom, or others. And so there really is a benefit to using the camera's processing, and that's where JPEGs are the truest form of what a manufacturer defines as its color science. So the benefits of the Fuji X RAW Studio app is that we can take those RAW images and we can process them or tweak them based on the settings that we put in camera. We could either just do a slight adjustment to what we already set in camera, or we could process a number of different recipes and we can batch create all sorts of different images off of the same raw file. So it's the equivalent of shooting multiple JPEGs with multiple settings using the camera's processing. So think of this as like a good hybrid point and flexibility between the two systems of JPEG and raw. So creating new recipes for your camera is not a simple and quick process. I mean, yes, you can get results quickly, but in terms of getting results that work, you're gonna to need to tweak them and refine them and adjust them. And you're only gonna be able to do that when you've shot in a number of different environments. So whether that's different lighting conditions, different weather, different times of the day, all sorts of differences that will make an image different, you need to evaluate and see how your recipe affects it. So the way that XRAW Studio works is it's an application you download from Fujifilm, works on both Mac and Windows. You then want to go into your camera settings and go to the connection setting and where you've got USB connection mode, you want to change it to USB RAW conversion. So we then just connect it up and fire up the XRAW Studio app and then within here this is where we'll load a particular folder of photos and you have to make sure that you're looking at images shot with the same camera that you've connected. So for example, I've got some images here that were shot with the X-T4. And if I just turn the camera on, you'll see that it then transitions to processing these images and up the top it recognizes where the X-T4 connected and the current battery level and other information. We can then look at these and we can see all of the settings that were applied in the camera. So at the time I was shooting RAW and JPEG on this weekend, I can see in here and I was changing and adjusting between a few different recipes just to see how it looked of this one particular scene. And as I click through on the right, I can see all of the conversion settings that I've got. So things like my dynamic range, my highlight control, my shadow control, the grain effect, my white balance shift, and a few other things. So this is what would have been created in camera and what goes straight into the JPEG if it came straight out of the camera. But because I got the raw file, I have the benefit of being able to change it. So for example, if I wanted to change my film simulation to my new favorite, classic negative, I can go through and I can change it. 
and then this is processing on the camera and I can export it like this. And of course, we've got controls for all of our settings. So if I want a bit more saturation, I could increase that there or I could decrease it. And again, these are all in tune with how the image is processed by the manufacturer. So it's not quite the same as if you used all of the sliders in Lightroom, for example. You may be able to get similar results, but these are going to be tailored specifically to Fujifilm and their own science based off of the sensor of the camera. So once I've gone through and I've created all my settings, I can then right click on my thumbnail and I can convert and it'll create a JPEG right next to that raw file ready for me to use. So of course you can do these one by one and you can make all your processes, but you can also copy your conversion profile and you can select and hold shift and then you can paste your profiles across multiple all at once and you can see them affected in the raw processor. But here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So when you get involved in the community of Fuji film recipes, you'll start to save them to your camera. Now your camera's quick menu only has space for seven custom modes. There's a lot of settings involved in the recipes and you can use apps that you can save them on your phone. You can see them all listed out, but it requires you to go back through and re-implement those recipes and save them to the camera. So what XRAW Studio allows you to do is you can save any number of recipes on the desktop and then you can transfer them across to the Fuji camera. Now, I'm not sure how compatible this is with older cameras, but the X-T4 definitely, and I'm sure going forward on newer Fuji cameras, this will all work flawlessly. But either way, you can save them to your desktop, and if you need to, you may have to copy them into your camera. And so from here, I've created a whole number of different user profiles, and I've got them just saved. So for example, I've got ones here called City Neg. I've saved ones here from Fuji X Weekly. So we've got the Kodachrome 64. Uh, I've also got the Portrait 800. And then there's a few more that I've created. Now, of course, you can go and take film recipes from other people in the community. So probably one of the biggest resources that gets dropped around in the comments a lot is Fuji X Weekly. And it's a website with loads of different recipes that you can choose from and you can see example images but I would definitely encourage you to go and explore and experiment with your own recipes. Maybe use one of these as a base and then go on beyond that and tweak it to your own liking. And the benefit of using the XRAW Studio app is that you can make your tweaks and you can see it on a whole wealth of images at the same time. So for example, here I've got Superstone and Superstone Bright, and these are ones that I've created previously but I can go through and I can see other images that were taken at the same time. And I can then compare how would Superstone look on this image. And I can tweak that and I can add it. And then I can find a good balance that covers a whole breadth of images and image styles. So different weather and different lighting, for example. And by having my recipes tailor-made for me, I know that they're gonna be my style straight out of camera. So I may have uh, an urban, an urban darker or an urban nighttime, for example, and then I may have a nature version, and I might like to have a portraits version for people shots. It's a little bit like choosing your film stock for an analog camera, but you've got all the benefits of a digital system to tweak and adjust things on the fly whilst you're out shooting, or afterwards in post-processing, yet still with those touches towards the actual pure science of the color in the camera. And as I said, in the desktop app, you can save any number of these, and then I can transfer them across. So let's say I've got my original City Neg that I wanted to apply over to my camera. So this is a recipe I've created previously. I can go to my camera profile and I can hit save, and I can then save it to that camera. Likewise, profiles that I've created out and about on the camera, I can then save back into my desktop. So I've got City Neg 2 that I created whilst I was out. It was an adjustment to my original City Neg that I created. I can hit save on my user profiles and give it a name, City Neg 2. And then there it is in my list of profiles and you can create a backup of things. So you can have a whole library of film recipes and then you can plug in your camera when you're ready to go out and shoot and you can then add in your seven film recipes that you wanna spend your time shooting with. It's a great way to collect things and test them out. And you can also see fine adjustments and how they differentiate between different images and image styles. So for example, here's another image taken in Liverpool Street in London. And I can go through and I can see all the different film simulation recipes that I've got saved here and how that image will look 
based on the different principles that are applied in these recipes. So if you're a little bit unsure if you want to get involved with shooting JPEG only, this is definitely a great halfway point into experimenting with images that you've already taken. It's a little bit like paper trading. You're not really doing anything damaging, yet you can still make all the investments and the gains from it, and you can have a bit of fun doing it at the same time. And likewise, if we look back into Lightroom and let's just see how those images are displayed differently. So this is the JPEG straight out of camera and this is the raw as Lightroom processes it. So it's similar, of course, and you can see if I just toggle between those, the subtle differences and the sort of softness on the contrast because the highlights are managed, the roll off is a little bit better than the way that Lightroom manages it. It's just that little bit more pleasing. Yes, you could make your tweaks with the develop modules and I'm planning to release some little presets to match up with my film simulations. But in all honesty, you're never quite gonna get exactly the same. And by reducing your time spent editing your images, you can go out and you can enjoy your shooting more. You could even go out and shoot more itself. And this process works so well across multiple different genres. But I think where I'm finding it most enjoyable is when I'm using my camera in social environments. So quite often I'll take a camera with me. So for example, this was my birthday weekend and I wanted to get some images, you know, some nice images with the camera. I didn't necessarily want to spend the time editing it afterwards. So shooting JPEG only was a great option for me. I did the raw as well, just so I could test and experiment. And if ever I did get any good snaps that I wanted to tweak and edit further, I've got the option to do it. But for those social occasions, you want good images straight out of the camera. You don't want the hassle and faff. So things like birthdays and just events of things, it's really great to have. And it's so enjoyable shooting JPEG only. And I'm loving it right now. Uh, I've had a lot of fun over the last two vlogs and I think I'm gonna make a series of videos about it over the summer. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you in another video real soon. Thanks for watching everyone. See you later, bye bye.